Evergreen and continuously photosynthesizing, Nara is a constant source of food, especially useful to insects. Flies require the green vegetation where larvae can develop. The pollen-packed flowers attract nectar feeders of all kinds. Blister beetles are often found chewing the stems, which produces a sap that other creatures then feed upon. So what you have at the Nara Amok is this whole series of niches of different type, type of niches where, where, which can be inhabited by different organisms. Now in this whole process what you would expect is that through natural selection that you would start finding some specialists that is that you only find the Nara. And we think they are there but at this stage we don't know about many. There's only one that we're quite sure of. It was only described some four years ago by David Barracliffe in, in, in Natal, which is a small fly. We call it the Nara fly. It's emerald green running around it. And it is a very small family of flies. And it's what we call a monotypical genus. There's, there's only one species in the genus, both the genus as well as, as the species. You only find a Nara. That's the only one that we're sure of. There's some other animals that you do find on it that people will tell you are specialists of Nara. Like one of them is a big ground cricket, a beautiful beast. Uh, some people think that they're very ugly. They call it the Nara cricket, but they're not Nara specialists. You actually find them right through the dunes. Nara has been utilized by inhabitants of the desert for millennia, and in recent years, been the subject of scientific investigation. Yet there is still much to learn, and current ongoing research at Gobabed hopes to unlock some of Nara's mysteries. So my project is to determine if the Nara plant utilizes fog as a source of water. And that's important in this hyper-arid environment because rain is so unpredictable and so scarce that plants and animals in this environment need to find a different source of water. So I'm trying to determine how Nara can use fog and you as a source of water and if it really does require it as a source of water. Existing knowledge of Nara points to groundwater as the main source of water, and it is widely believed that its tap roots could reach up to 50 meters. However, many Nara plants grow far from obvious groundwater sources. The question is, do these populations utilize moisture from fog and dew? There's different methods for Nara to utilize fog. So it's also just maybe droplets dripping on the ground and being absorbed by the roots or some plants also have the ability to absorb water directly through their stems or through the leaves. So um, I've collected different Nara stem clippings of younger stems and then older stems um, just to determine in a lab experiment if it does absorb water directly through the stem. In the laboratory, fluorescein dye is mixed with fog water, which then fluoresces under ultraviolet light. With a humidifier to prevent evaporation, time-lapse photography reveals the stem's ability to directly absorb moisture. <laughs> 